Ah, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jossie Lynn J and I know I haven't posted a video in a while and it's not just because you know it's the holidays and spending the end of the year to kind of self-reflect and unwind. Those things are true but to be honest with you I had no idea what video to make and I think a lot of other creators may find themselves in a similar situation. However, that's not gonna foreshadow 2021. I got some exciting content and things in store for 2021 that I'm really excited about. Now I'm filming this video before 2021, so forgive me if I'm talking like 2021 is in the future. I would greatly appreciate it if you can give this video a thumbs up. It helps out with the algorithm a lot. And also if you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel and become a part of this amazing community of creators, engineers, software developers, and of course, the curious. I also want to thank Webroot for sponsoring this video. So I got this new tripod that I am really excited about. This thing is massive. I might do like a quick B-roll segment of my new setup and I got like this video head to just have better quality videos, especially I want to diversify the type of shots I shoot, especially since I'm kind of pinned in this corner for shooting most of my content just because this space makes the most sense. So I've been a front-end developer for a little bit over a year now. I used to work as a full-stack developer and I thought I was more of a front-end dev, which I was to an extent, but now that I've been a front-end developer full-time for over a year, um, it's a lot more than I thought. And of course, there are still some similarities that I find between front end and full stack. And that's thanks to the modernization and just innovation that we've had within the JavaScript library and framework, you know, sector the past like five years. In this video, I'm gonna discuss what it's actually like to be a front end developer, but I'm also gonna talk about the technology that you use, the programming languages that I code in, the apps that I use to code and for design, along with projects that I've worked on to give you a holistic picture of what front end devs do, and that also can help you work on those skill sets if you wanna be a front end dev. With pretty much all of our lives being digital, especially those of you who are students, using personal computers for homework research and projects is of utmost importance to incorporate staying safe physically and digitally while going back to college or university. Webroot is a brand passionate about protecting businesses and consumers like myself from cyber threats. Through their software, they combat some of the most difficult cybersecurity threats, challenges, and constantly anticipate new features to help protect their users from potential threats that emerge. I know that sometimes it can feel overwhelming thinking about all the different cyber threats, especially since there's so many new ones emerging and it can feel difficult to combat them. However, investing in a cybersecurity system can make a huge difference when it comes to protecting your information and having that peace of mind is worth it. Webroot's internet security system that I've been using is very simple to use, probably one of the most simple security apps that I've used because there's literally only one button to click to scan your computer. You'll also notice in the internet security app window that it tells you the last time you scan, the duration, and when you should complete another scan, which is helpful because when you're busy, it can be hard to keep up with those checks sometimes. You'll also notice that there are three security settings that you can toggle on and off. With Webroot's internet security, you can protect your online shopping information and online banking through their web browser extension. You can also protect you know, your passwords, your usernames, and your credit card information, which is encrypted through one master password. Not to forget, you can secure up to five PCs you know, MacBooks, tablets, or smartphones. Be sure to click the link down in the description box that will also pop up right now for a discounted rate of Webroot's internet security system. Once again, thank you to Webroot for sponsoring this video. So the main tech that I use as a front-end developer is a 15-inch MacBook Pro. I also have this 15-inch HP that I use when I program in Visual Studio for a much larger website. <laughs> I'll let you guess what site that is based on my LinkedIn profile. 
I also use a 34 inch ultra wide monitor and a pair of surface headphones for noise canceling so I can get in the zone. And because when I was in the office, it could get pretty loud and distracting since it's such a collaborative environment. Tech is really important as a front end dev and I couldn't imagine not having you know, an ultra wide or two displays, let alone not having a high resolution. When I was in the office, I actually had two monitors, one that was 4K because it's super important to get the best picture possible because every pixel matters as a front end dev. If you're wondering why I use the MacBook, it's honestly the best device as a front end developer, especially when you consistently work with designers who primarily use MacBooks. We share assets all the time. It's much easier using the server that I didn't even know existed in MacBooks until I started this job. Also, when it comes to collaboration, MacBooks are far more reliable than PCs, especially when it comes to those Microsoft team meetings. The reason why having an ultra wide or two monitors is so important is because when you're a front end dev, you not only have all the apps open that full stack or mobile devs use, but you also need screen real estate for design assets, copyright and SEO. The main programming languages that I code in are HTML, of course, CSS, vanilla JavaScript, depending on the project and Vue.js. I'm actually using a framework that's part of Vue.js called Nux.js that I'll talk about a little bit later. Also, I don't want you all to grill me in a comment section talking about, oh, well, Vue.js isn't a programming language. I know that it's actually a framework, it's a JavaScript framework, so you'll be coding with JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So I do most of my programming for really large projects using CSS, HTML, JavaScript, slash jQuery, and C Sharp. When it comes to progressive web applications, we use Nux.js that I just mentioned is a framework that's part of Vue.js for developers who want to build simple but yet powerful web applications, static web applications. That's important. So basically, our lead dev and I decided to program in Nux.js specifically based on my experience with you know, Angular and AngularJS along with the business slash, I guess, design requirements that we had and figured that, hey, doing this with vanilla JS, HTML and CSS would just take forever. It's better to use a JavaScript framework like Vue.js that's simple, lightweight, but also we can leverage the component-based architecture, SEO, and static site generation. As you can imagine, as a front-end dev, semantic HTML, CSS, and accessibility is very important and is a big part of my job, especially since I build web pages and sites that external users have access to. I also sometimes work in Squarespace if something custom needs to be built and WordPress as well. So Lee got me this new uh, coffee cup and uh, coffee's important to me. I'm not one of those people that needs coffee in order to function. I just like the way it tastes and it kind of energizes me. So I don't drink it first thing in the morning like I just can't, especially early in the morning. The only thing I can really consume that early is like water. But anyways, I got this new coffee mug, happy to serve you um, with like this Greek design. All right, so apps that I use as a front end developer, you'll probably be pretty familiar with these apps if you are a developer or designer because front end dev is really just a blend between the two. So for software development, I use Visual Studio Code, which is by far my favorite IDE. Man, it's my go-to. VS Code is my favorite IDE because it's simple yet powerful. I love the experience. Really, you can do everything you need as a dev, especially when building front-end web apps. You can use NPM to install the libraries and dependencies that you need, along with installing extensions to beautify and format your code. Now. From a personal standpoint, I do use a terminal a lot in Visual Studio Code, but I use Git Bash more just cause I don't run into as many conflicts like with permissions and stuff, but it works seamlessly on my MacBook. No issues at all. I also use Visual Studio for, you know, the larger projects that are, you know, ASP.NET C Sharp based. From a project management slash like deployment, um, standpoint, I use Azure boards or Azure DevOps to create our stories so we can work in more of a agile environment. That's something that I've helped bring to the digital marketing department along with using Git. 
But um, er all of that is really web-based. There's no like app that we use. It's just a web app that we use. Um, Azure, some Azure website, I can't remember the name, but maybe Azure portal. For design, I use Adobe XD. Now, it's funny because as a full stack dev, I did way more designing. And I think that's just because there were way more devs and projects than designers. So I kind of had to wear a design hat and I was a UX champion. Whereas now I have designers that work with us for specific projects. So there's always gonna be a designer that you're working with, um, whether they're designing something new or there's something existing. I also use XD as a reference point to you know, know what the look and feel is for the website, along with copying hex values and other CSS styles that I need for specific UI elements. And every once in a while, I use it for exporting assets and using it for the specific copy. By copy, I mean copyright. I also sometimes use Photoshop to like resize and slice assets. I, I primarily do that for um, display ads. And uh, yeah, I don't do it a ton just cause that's more of a design thing. All right, moving on to the last thing. I don't wanna keep you too long. I hope the chapters were helpful so you can skip around. I've been utilizing that feature more because I just think it's a better experience, especially if the video is longer, you just wanna see something specific. But now we're gonna talk about the specific projects that I work on as a front end dev. And to be honest with you, some of them aren't that much different from full stack. The only difference is I never like debug a server. Um, I don't do much API work either. And if I do, it's very minimal. So it really depends. Since I work in digital marketing, most projects are quick. There's quick turnaround, um, which is you know a lot different from my experience working as a full stack developer where you're working on a specific project for you know a year or longer. Now there is a project or are projects that I've worked on for like a year now, if not longer. However, um, I also work on smaller projects as well. So some of the projects I worked on this past year were display ads, which have a really small code base where I'm just using vanilla JS, HTML and CSS to bring a display ad design to life with animations. I've also worked on a redesign that I can't wait to roll out with the team using Next.js. This is by far the project I'm most proud of because of its ambiguity in the beginning of the project, scale and learning Vue.js, which has been a blast for real. It's so easy to pick up. Working on very large websites that are external facing really stretch my front end skill set sometimes because of how responsive and accessible the UI elements need to be along with the browser testing and the occasional waking up at 6 a.m. to elevate. All right, so that concludes this video. Give this video a thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below your goals for 2021. I believe, you know, speaking something into existence. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, have a blessed rest of your week and have a wonderful 2021. I'm sure you're gonna crush it this year. Peace. Thank you.